Hi everyone, this is Sally and my colleague Ross coming to you from Counseling Services at the college. And phew, we have made it. It's the end of the quarter. We're finishing up finals, looking forward to winter break. And Ross and I have been talking about the fact that this is going to be a winter break unlike any other winter break you've ever experienced that we've ever experienced because whether we like it or not, um, the pandemic is still continuing. Uh, and so um, this is, we're dealing with uh, continued restrictions, having to make difficult choices around safety. Um, you've also finished a quarter of really intense learning online in very unique ways, maybe struggling with isolation, just really exhausted from the quarter may be feeling really relieved that it's the end of the quarter. And so we wanted to give you some tips and just to think about how to have this very unusual winter break, be a break that's restorative to you so that you can come into the new year 2021 with some uplifted energy and feeling some renewal for yourself. And as we've been talking about this, um, in some really broad ways, we've, we've been considering that with students, there are really big, two big broad general categories. One is at the community college, there are traditional students who maybe are younger, don't have kids or as many life responsibilities as another group of students that maybe are older, returning to school, um, and are heads of households, maybe single parents, parents working and so um, those two groups of students can have really different expectations or ideas about what the break is going to be like and responsibilities and Ross you had some great thoughts about of younger students who might end up have a lot of time on their hands mm. during winter break and how to get restorative time during the break yeah yeah thanks Sally so you know I think often <clears throat> humans, students in particular, think after a big push like you've just had in this last quarter, really a lot of focused attention, maybe some even sleepless nights or at least sleep deprived nights, somewhat sleep deprived nights. I just want to especially tune with finals. Out. Especially with finals, <laughs> yeah. you know, people are coming into my counseling appointments, you know, pretty groggy. And uh, um, so, you know, the natural thing is to think, I just need to shut down, basically. I need to sleep. Of course, you do need mm -hmm. to do that. Maybe I just need to tune out. You know, I don't want to focus on, on much of anything. Maybe I'll just watch movies and, uh, you know, just, just kind of zone out for a while. Yeah, kind of like a collapse. Like I'm just, I'm just yeah. going to collapse. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, like a, just, the you know, kind of flopping in that way. And of course, uh, there's a place for that. Absolutely, it's not a bad thing to do that. But often, you know, there's a, a, a secondary need that's neglected, which is to kind of recharge or restore uh, your life energy, your enthusiasm, your sense of engagement with um, others and with the world uh, outside of this, mm -hmm. you know, academic setting. And so would encourage folks to recognize that that may be a need. Sometimes I liken this to, the, you know, there's a difference between you know, just uh, putting your cell phone aside. If it's the battery's getting low, you can put it aside to preserve the battery, you know, just let it zone out, let it rest. Or you can plug it in and start to recharge that battery. And so thinking about, oh. think, yeah, thinking about ways, mm -hmm. um, which usually require, uh, especially in times of uh, COVID, uh, um, a little bit more intentionality about like, how, how am I going to spend my time? How am I going to direct my attention in a way that actually recharges me rather than just allows my myself mm. to rest. So what might that look like, Ross? Because what I'm if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying that, yes, there's a place for kind of uh, rest, you know, uh, sleeping, just uh, really some downtime, but that it's and that might be the setting the phone aside. But the, the break is also an important time to plug the phone in, meaning recharging. And so what might those activities look like if it's not, you're saying don't spend the entire break binging Netflix and laying on the couch. <laughs> but so yeah. what to do instead? 
Yeah, so instead of just that kind of, I refer to it as trance, you know, kind of, and I, I do it, you know, getting into the trance of a movie or something like that. Sure. Or, you know. Yeah, yeah or the so, Queen's Gambit. <laughs> Queen's Gambit, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there to trance yeah, out yeah. to. Um, but in terms of recharging, um, you know, I think about one, uh, a researcher, his name is Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi, don't ask me to spell his last name. Um, okay. But he, he studies, um, he calls them flow states. So these are a, a state of mind that um, are associated with people who, who describe their lives as uh, satisfied. You know, they describe themselves as, you know, happy in a, in a sense of uh, leading a, a meaningful, purposeful, satisfied life. You know, they're recharged. In other words, they're really mm, recharged up. Their batteries are recharged. Yeah, and yeah. one thing that yeah. stands apart with these folks is they have regular flow states. So the important thing about a flow state is <clears throat> it actually, it tends to come on. You can't make it happen, but you can cultivate, you can invite it to happen. But you need two things to make it happen. One is an, actually a pretty challenging task. They don't tend to come on when you're just engaged in easy tasks, like just hanging out watching Netflix. They require you to like really mm -hmm. be engaged and to <clears throat> be working on a task at a fairly high level. And number two, skills <clears throat> that meet the task when applied in a very intentional okay. way, yeah. really focused. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. an example of this is, um, and this may sound strange at first glance, is uh, um, Years ago, I w visited a beekeeping supply store, you know, a place that would provide everything you need to keep uh, honeybees. And the owner mm -hmm. let me know that uh, he finds a lot of folks coming and keeping bees for the first time uh, that are in really high stress professions like surgeons, for example. And they do it as a way to recharge, restore, uh, as a way to de-stress. And I thought, this is really strange. I, being surrounded by stinging insects doesn't f feel to me like it would be recharging. <laughs> Not inherently <laughs> relaxing. It sounds super stressful. But when he explained it, it made more sense to me in that uh, he described the bees as being pretty sensitive to, um, you know, if someone's... Um, not being mindful of what they're doing physically if they're acting in kind of a you know a um, kind of a jerky manner if they're bobbling mm -hmm. the the supplies that yeah. they're they're working with or even if they are seem unattentive or stressed and tense the bees he said can kind of sense that and they'll in a, in a sense give you biofeedback they'll start stinging you so it's yeah. a pretty challenging yeah. activity this is not watching netflix you know this is actually you really need to focus on what you're doing but with beekeeping, unlike surgery, you know, you can develop a, a competence level with that pretty quickly to meet that high level of challenge. And uh, mm -hmm. so when those two met in the, the new beekeepers, what he described is it was it would be very relieving to them because they'd enter, essentially, they'd enter a flow state. They'd be mm -hmm. fully mm -hmm. focused on what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Typically, when people are in a flow state, time goes away. They kind of forget time. And they're mm -hmm. just fully engaged in what they're doing in a very active rather than a mm -hmm. passive way like that. Mm -hmm. so. so so those kinds of activities um, that might uh, induce a flow state would be really valuable over the break for Absolutely. students. Yep. And so maybe students, um, you know, winter in the Pacific Northwest might not be the best time to take up beekeeping, <laughs> but there might be other things that students could do. Um, and maybe it's revisiting uh, a, something that they that a student really enjoys, like a musical instrument, singing, uh, taking up a new task or new uh, talent or activity that you've been curious about. Maybe exploring a new language, um, uh, uh, <clears throat> sports, getting outside uh, during the day is going to be really important. Would those be the kinds of activities that you, you think would fit that getting to that flow state? Yeah, as long as they're done at a level, a, a level of challenge for you, you know, mm -hmm. so that they really require you to really uh, focus on on what you're doing in order to be successful at, mm -hmm. at whatever you're doing. So if that's, right. you know, exercising, it would be exercising at an intensity that really requires your focus. 
you know, not going mm -hmm. beyond that, but you know, it's not, it wouldn't be uh, just casually walking. It would be really kind of finding your edge there. Uh huh. Gotcha. If it's yeah. music or art or, uh, you know, uh, crafts or something like that, it would be doing a craft that you can't just do mindlessly, that it would really require kind of pretty intense focus so that you could do yeah. it well. Great. Yeah. Super. I'm glad it's interesting you brought up the uh, uh, crafts <clears throat> and this is a great time of year with the holidays that sometimes different crafts or things we might be creating gifts for people. So it's like got some challenge to it. And that brings to mind uh, something I wanted to make sure that we touched on was uh, for students that may feel like they're anticipating the holiday break with too much to do because they're the head of a household or they're a parent and uh, they're anticipating the holidays and, and this uh, time with COVID as struggling to what are the holidays going to look like this year and, and maybe um, having unreasonable pressure or expectation that they're putting on themselves to have this holiday season be exactly like prior ones or to have all the traditions to have it look just the same as it has. And um, so that's something I wanted to address and I know that we've talked about too, is if you're a student who is in that role, you're the head of a household, you're a parent, you're a single parent, and you're anticipating the holiday and the break and maybe feeling overwhelmed with, how am I gonna get through this? You know, it's, I, I might not have the money to get gifts that I typically would, or I'm not able to get together with family members because of, you know, physical distancing, the COVID restrictions that we're still under and, and, ab and struggling to abide to. Um, or maybe not, maybe even being food insecure, not, you know, being, needing to rely maybe on the food bank right now. Um, and so maybe feeling frustrated or angry, sad, worried about that. And so uh, Ross, you and I talked about also the importance of adjusting our expectations for this holiday season. Mm -hmm. That this holiday season, whatever holidays, whatever you celebrate at this time of year, doesn't have to look like prior years. Um, you can actually use this season to create new traditions, new ways of being uh, that can be just as enjoyable, just as celebratory, uh, don't have to be as big or as huge as as prior, prior celebrations, that a, a smaller, more intimate celebration with people in your immediate household, Zooming with, with, distant, with other relatives in other places, uh, having uh, smaller meals, um, you know, uh, lowering expectations about the decorating, decorating, the baking, gift giving, all of that uh, can be a really important way to just be with what is the reality of this holiday season for me and my family. And, and to be okay with that and embrace that rather than resist it and be frustrated, angry, disappointed about it, is to turn towards what can I celebrate as the year comes to a close? What can I be grateful for? Um, what new traditions, uh, what new things can I do with my family? And to celebrate the relationships I do have, celebrate what I can be grateful for. Um, even celebrating accepting help from others, knowing that someday you will be able to help others in return and maybe even do that right now in your own family or with your own neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that, that invitation to, to, to regularly check in with oneself. What can I be, what can I be grateful for? Which, you know, may be hard, particularly given that, you know, for, for many students, this is, it's a really heavy time. Um, there's a lot yeah. of things to be, um, to, to be concerned about. Um, so it really might require that intentionality of, uh, not to diminish the, the hardship, but to also ask, what can I be grateful for? What's a, what's a ray of light in this, in this situation? And how That's... can I capture it as much as, as much as possible? Yeah. Thanks Ross. Absolutely. One of the, 
uh, holidays, actually a time of year that I really like to celebrate in December is solstice, that December 21st is the darkest point in the year for our yeah. photo period. And I think that in some ways that's very symbolic. Uh, it's the dark, we are all moving through the darkest point of the year, maybe the darkest year we've ever experienced in our lives. And um, just like nature, after the 21st, it's the, the light is going to begin to return. Mm -hmm. And while we recognize the struggles, dark things in our lives, we can also collectively recognize that we're all moving to the light as well. I think that's a great place to, to end. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we wish you all a wonderful holiday season, however you celebrate it. And we look forward to being with you in 2021. We'll see you winter quarter. As always, you can reach us at counseling at spscc.edu. Take care, everybody.